Well, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Rahimi, uh, another vascular surgeon uh, who joined our uh, institution about a year ago, and he's going to discuss with us peripheral arterial disease and uh, management. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Maham Rahimi. I'm going to talk to you about peripheral arterial disease. Let me see if I can make this work. There you go. I have no disclosure. Uh, let's uh, define peripheral arterial disease. The picture on the uh, right uh, is a picture from JAMA 2004 showing a patient, typical patient with peripheral arterial disease. And what it is is basically decreasing the blood flow to the lower extremity uh, because of the diseased artery plaque formation, for instance. And uh, they get the pain in their calf or their thigh, and that's called claudication. Uh, approximately 12 million Americans are affected with peripheral arterial disease, and the risk factors are increased with age, smoking, diabetes, uh, hyperlipidemia, obesity, and uh, renal insufficiency. Uh, sorry if it's not coming uh, uh, too perfectly, but this is the most important part of my talk. Uh, what is the natural history of peripheral arterial disease? And uh, when they looked at after five years outcome, it divided to two categories. One, uh, does this uh, intermittent claudication, pain in the calf, in the thigh, uh, progresses? And what they found out is that after actually 70 to 80% of the patient, their stab uh, stable claudication, they do not get worsened. Only 20, 30% do, and 1 to 3%, they get rest pain or ulcers uh, uh, with this uh, claudication. But the most important part is what happened to this patient after five years. Uh, the mor morbidity and mortality because of the cardiovascular disease as a whole picture uh, is, is looked at. And they saw that 20% will uh, die from MI or stroke and uh, mortality is up to 10 to 15%. So the question arises, if a patient comes to intermittent claudication, uh, what should we do? So let's uh, go ahead through diagnosis first, and then we'll go through the treatment. The first recommendation is if somebody comes in with the symptoms of peripheral vascular disease, with a claudication, pain on lower extremity, signs uh, suggesting peripheral artery disease, ulcer, or rest pain, um, they should do something called ankle brachial index. They basically uh, put a blood pressure cuff on their upper extremity, use the highest number to compare it to the lower extremity. And the number approximately close to one is normal. Anything below that is uh, considered uh, abnormal. However, if it's higher than 1.3, it just indicates the artery is so diseased that uh, this study is not appropriate for and uh, other modalities should be used. Uh, again, the question is when to do the ankle barrier index if the patient has symptoms or if they don't have any symptoms but they have abnormal exam, the, the physician or nurse practitioner or the nurse unable to uh, palpate the distal pulse and the patient is more than 70 years old, the smokers, diabetes, they have the risk factors. Now, if they are unable to do ankle brachial index and they are symptomatic, they can do uh, physiologic non-invasive studies that they can look at this uh, uh, more complete I'll look at it, ankle brachial index that put blood pressure cuff not only at ankle but at the different levels on the thigh and lower extremity and look at these waveforms. And if the amplitude changes, the waveform changes, uh, that indicates there is peripheral arterial disease. So that's how it gets diagnosed. Uh, if the patient is symptomatic and uh, deemed to have revascularization, uh, at that time the recommendation is to do some kind of imaging studies, either ultrasound, CT, MRI, or even angiogram. The patient that are asymptomatic with a peripheral arterial disease, a multidisciplinary need to, team needs to look at the patient and uh, they uh, need to suggest to the patient to stop smoking, educate them about the signs and symptoms of progression, diabetic and sugar management. And uh, the recommendation from our society is against invasive treatment if the patient is asymptomatic, uh, regardless of their hemodynamic measures on the ABI. If the patient, however, is symptomatic in addition to what I mentioned previously, uh, they need to look at uh, their cardiovascular risk factor and try to decrease that. As I said, the morbidity and mortality is high for this patient with intermediate claudication. And if they have symptoms, we should make sure that the patient is on cholesterol controlling medication, antiplatelet uh, aspirin. If they don't have congestive heart failure evident from uh, echo, uh, they should trial three months of uh, celestazole, or if they have congestive 
digestive heart failure, they should try a pentoxifiline and uh, some kind of exercise program. And what that recommendation is to walk in at least three times per week uh, for 30 to 60 minutes for these patients with symptomatic peripheral artery disease. Again, I'd like to point to this uh, slide again, uh, the intermittent claudication, the outcomes, uh, the most important thing that uh, the practitioner need to look into is to decrease their risk factors because the cardiovascular morbidity and mortality is very high, such as if there is coronary artery disease. Now, what are the revascularization options? There are endovascular and there are open options. Usually, endovascular options are uh, designed for patients with a focal disease or they're very high risk for open vascular procedure. The picture on, on the right side of the screen is indicating uh, using a balloons and a stents in order to keep the artery open. The open procedures are uh, using bypass and uh, other techniques in order to re revascularize the, uh, the, the limb that is in danger. <clears throat> These are some of other modalities available, such as atherectomy devices, literally uh, carving out the plaque uh, from the inside of the blood vessel or laser, and then uh, treating it with the balloons and the stents as necessary. Uh, Post-operative management for these patients, again, it's important. Uh, optimal medical management with antiplatelet, cholesterol, their blood sugar, uh, and also a smoking cessation. And the surveillance with the non-invasive, the ABI duplex, are very crucial. This is the reference I've used uh, from Journal of Vascular Surgery in 2016, uh, which uh, uh, it's a very good reference for people that are more interested in peripheral artery disease and how to manage them. Thank you.